by using machine learning techniques, it can make the traditional model of forecasting wildfires more accurate. Hi, and welcome to GAO's Watchdog Report, your source for fact-based, nonpartisan news and information from the U.S. Government Accountability Office. I'm your host, Holly Hobbs. As weather-related events like hurricanes and wildfires become more frequent and severe, meteorologists and others are looking for new ways to predict or forecast these events. In a new report, we take a look at the role artificial intelligence may play in predicting weather events and the status of AI use in environmental modeling. Joining us to tell us more is GAO's Brian Bothwell, an expert on AI technologies. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, Holly. So, Brian, how is AI currently being used to predict weather events? And what's the benefits of using AI versus traditional modeling? So we talk specifically about machine learning techniques, which are branched by AI. They're mostly being used in the research and development phase as relates to natural hazard modeling. But there are some operational uses. For example, there's one model that's being used to predict hurricanes. And the machine learning model is better at predicting the intensification of hurricanes than traditional models are. So that's one of the benefits of using AI. In some situations, you can significantly speed up the forecasting. And quicker predictions of these natural hazards could lead to increased warning times and greater opportunities to protect people and property from the effects of these hazards. So how exactly does it work? Like, how would AI be used to forecast a hurricane versus a wildfire? One thing that machine learning techniques need is a lot of data. So if you have enough data about a natural hazard and the different aspects of it, then you can uncover relationships in the data that aren't represented by traditional models. So that can help you with your forecasting. You can also use these techniques to improve the input data for traditional models. So we can use machine learning to provide better data regarding the fuels data for wildfires. That's the trees, the brush, all the other things that can burn in a wildfire. And if you have improved data going in, it helps the traditional model forecast the results better. So if AI has all this potential when it comes to weather, why isn't it being used more widely already? Well, there are some challenges. One is that machine learning can be expensive. It's very computing intensive. Also, it needs large amounts of historical data to create a model that will model these hazards. For example, you know, the Category 5 hurricanes, they're very destructive, but they are relatively rare. We don't have that many of them. So it can be a situation where you don't really have enough data to feed that machine learning model to give you accurate forecasting of those types of events. Another challenge is just the acceptance by forecasters. The forecaster has to be making high-risk decisions like issuing evacuation orders. They're probably going to be more comfortable with the traditional models that they've been working with and understand better rather than newer AI-enabled models. So Brian just told us that machine learning, a form of artificial intelligence, has the potential to forecast weather events more quickly and accurately, which could save lives, but that the costs and other obstacles are preventing its broader use. So Brian, our new report includes some policy options or considerations for increasing the use of AI and environmental modeling. What can you tell us about those options? Yeah, we developed four different policy options for Congress and other decision makers to consider. Um, they address data collection and sharing, education and training in these topics, hiring and retention issues in the workforce, and protecting against bias in the data. And let me just give you one example. So I've, I've mentioned data a lot, but that first policy option is talking about enhancing data sharing and collection. We go into how you could potentially increase the amount of data that you can collect. You may need to actually build out more infrastructure for that. There's a lot of existing data out there that's not necessarily shared. So some of those barriers could be broken down to increase the amount of data that modelers could use. And there's also an issue about making that data AI ready. It's all in different formats. So creating a standard would also help to enhance the data collection and sharing. We've done a lot of work on AI use. How does this fit into the portfolio of work? And what other work do we have that's sort of relevant to what we discussed today? We've done a lot of work on the use of artificial intelligence. Um, 
Uh, just a couple of years ago, we issued an AI framework that identifies key practices for federal agencies. And we've also issued several reports that assess artificial intelligence use in specific areas like drug development, disease diagnosis, and now with this report, natural hazard forecasting. We've also issued a, um, science and technology spotlights on topics like generative AI and deep fakes. But these are just a few of the reports we've published. Brian, last question. What's the bottom line of this report? So AI, in particular machine learning, can provide benefits by reducing forecast times. It can make models more accurate. It can reduce forecast uncertainty, which could result in potentially saving lives and property. But there are still some challenges that have to be overcome in implementing these techniques. That was Brian Bothwell talking about AI environmental modeling. Thanks for your time, Brian. Thank you, Holly. And thank you for listening to the Watchdog Report. To hear more podcasts, subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen. And make sure to leave a rating and review to let others know about the work we're doing. For more from the Congressional Watchdog, the U.S. Government Accountability Office, visit us at gao.gov.